It's not easy for my mother to support all of us for the studies. So I give up my studies and I came out to work here to give a big sacrifice for all my siblings so that I can give them a better life. It's a very tough as a single mom for four kids. I'm only thinking about my kids, how I can eat, how I can survive them, how I can give the education. That's it. You're not around when they're sick. You're not around when they need help with their, with their studies, you know. Everything I'm sacrificing right now is for them. So I just hope they realize that. So when they pack their bags and all that, it's a whole lot of sacrifices and living behind. Migrants are just like any one of us. All of us have stories that tell us of struggles, of humbling moments. I wanted to finish my degree to be a lawyer, but everything didn't work it out the way I wanted it to be. The reason why I left my country, because I wanted to, to give a better life for my two kids. And besides that, I also look after my mom. During the time I first come, it's quite difficult for me to adjust. It's different, very, very, very different. I experienced some employers would even go through my stuff without letting me know. I only get to sleep in the kitchen. How homesick I was then because I have no one to talk to, not even the neighbor, you know. Which one is not deserving of a home? No need to be facing fear at every moment they turn. They deserve dignity as a human person, as a child of God. I deal with a lot of uh, foreign talents in the IT industry. So I talk to them and stuff. And then I start to hear about the challenges that they have, leaving their loved ones behind, some of them, uh, the children, you know. I start to see differently when I put myself in, the, in their shoes. In order to be able to reach out to others, you have to carry the pain of others in your heart. We cannot help people by keeping a distance. And when you identify with them, their sorrow, their struggles, share their pain, then you know what to do. Because I think of the brothers and sisters that are suffering or are not doing so well, it just aches me. What is our way of looking at persons? As just for use? Or is it someone that God has given me? So I step in to help. I find joy to know that they are relieved. I always remember that I should use my gift to glorify His name. God has given us a role to be a support, to be a help. That will say that I am really a companion on the journey with this migrant. A companion does not force away. We don't really show the way even. We just actually walk with this person who comes to us. For me, I consider my boss as a very good employer. We are just a family. We talk like friends. We go out like a sisters. Whatever you do at home, you are happy. You don't feel any restrictions from her. She understands you. She supports you. We keep thinking that there's a difference in a more elevated way you know, for employers. Instead, can it be that this person who comes into my household becomes part of my household? How I am with her reflects who I am. It reflects who I am as an employer, as a human person. Some of the employers would treat their helpers like part of the family. I'm lucky that some of my employers did that to me. Even if you're not working with them anymore, you still have the contact. You can SMS with each other and catch up with what's been going on with your life. If I don't love my neighbor, and right now if I don't love the migrant as my neighbor, how can I say that I love Christ? If I fail to love God, I failed my life. And I cannot love God if I ignore the neighbor that is there at my door. We are here available for those who are in need, especially the migrants. Deprived of justice, respect, and most of all, that whole truth of who they really are. 
I know God sees only with love. And he sees the beauty of this whole person.